Okay, so we've got two games to talk about, starting with Game 71 against the only team the Canucks make trades with now, the Calgary Flames. The ex-Canucks sweetheart slash favorite punching bag, Andre Kuzmenko's first game against his former team. It should be a good one. Let's see what happens. Connor Garland cutting to the middle, a pass in front, and Homelander scores! Nils That big hog scream was brought to you by Caden from Richmond, Kentucky. Send your big hog yelps to nuckhead.viewers at gmail.com. What a beautiful goal that was. Tick, tack, toe. All he had to do was tap it in. Also, Big Hog is getting better every game. After scoring the opening goal, he continued to work his ass off, and I think this is a great example of the kind of threat he poses when he's on the ice. He won a puck battle along the boards, and then literally created a breakaway for himself, fighting his way up the ice, and probably would have scored two if the post was just a little bit to the left. He's gonna be scary in the playoffs. This was also Elias Lindholm's first game playing against his former team, and there's no question he hasn't reached his full potential as a member of the Canucks yet, but I think we might have a reason as to why that is. Well, Rick Tockett said this week, Ron, that he's banged up and battling something and basically it's it's an injury that's being managed on a day-to-day -day basis evaluated on a day-to-day -day basis i understand there's an appointment next week where they're going to try to sort this all but right now lindholm is playing through it but hopefully they'll get some clarity on what exactly is bothering him next week so he can get back to full health look he's getting closer to his full power every game i mean just watch how he steals the puck two separate times from two different players in under seven seconds and creates a scoring chance for mikhaev here let's give the guy a break i'm sure he'll be ready by the playoffs. Casey Ryan Gosling to Smith continued his stellar play in net for the Canucks. It was his fifth game since taking over the starting position for the injured Thatcher Demko, and he's been nothing short of great so far. He's getting help from the team too. Just look at this unbelievable defensive play from Teddy Bluger to break up a two-on-one for the Flames. Absolutely Blugerful. Then Big Hog reverse hit Dryden Hunt, so Hunt tried to get him back but completely missed him. The Hog is just too slippery. Then Nikita Zadorov leveled his old teammate AJ Greer. We got to see Kuzi spinning like a Beyblade again. Then Tyler Myers blocked a shot, and I don't think it felt very good. Then Martin Pospisil tried to hit Quinn Hughes, which made Philip Hronik very angry. So in return, he made Flames rookie Connor Zari look like one of those crash test dummies they use for testing the safety of cars. Oh, and then this happened. That big hog scream was brought to you by Ziggy from Vancouver Island. But hey, before we move on, let's watch that again. Okay, one more time. Nils Grundhug Huglander. Big Hog whipped out the old Sid the Kid leg kick pump fake backhand roof daddy sneaky cheese yummy town? <laughs> of course he did. 2 0 Canucks. Huberdeau got a breakaway, but DeSmith stopped him. Then Blake Coleman got a breakaway, but Tyler Myers stopped him before DeSmith had to do anything. Now, the Flames did eventually get one by DeSmith, but only because the shot deflected off Carson Soucy's stick. This is a good teaching moment for any lazy thinkers out there. At first glance, one might think DeSmith was at fault for this goal and may have even went as far to pick up their phone and tweet out something derogatory about him, but two seconds of replay footage and 0.5 seconds of mental focus is all you need to quickly understand that this was a bad bounce that Casey had no chance on. And look, you can't really avoid things like this happening in the sport of hockey, so it's all about how you respond to it. So, how did the Canucks respond? Well, PD blocked a shot, Myers blocked a shot, The Post blocked a shot, DeSmith made a save, Zadorov wiped out Pospisil, Pod Colson sent Miller in on a breakaway, Miller was tripped, the Canucks got a power play, Miller scored on that power play, the crowd started chanting Miller's name, Miller's daughter was given a beautiful core memory. Coach Rick Tockett watched it all unfold with pride in his eyes. Lindholm scored an empty netter on his former team, and the Canucks won 4-1. Not away, the Flames do score! Okay, 4-2, but still. Also, I just want to take a moment to emphasize how great it is to hear a packed and passionate Rogers Arena again for the first time in what feels like 10 years. There's definitely been some amazing and memorable games here and there over that time, but it's been 11 years since the Canucks were as good as they are now, and the city is feeling it. I love it, I'm so happy. Now, onto what may end up being a preview of the Canucks' first round playoff matchup, Game 72 against the Los Angeles Kings, and man, what a game this was. There was post-whistle rough stuff, players slashing one another with no penalties called, giant bone-rattling hits, an ugly opening goal to put the Kings up 1-0. Why is it ugly? 
Well, because the Canucks bench got confused during a line change and accidentally only had four players on the ice during a rush for LA, leaving Kevin Fiala wide open. This is the kind of mistake you don't want to see in the playoffs, so it's good the Canucks are getting it out of their systems now. The Kings' lead would only last a few minutes though, thanks to an amazing shift by the Canucks' fourth line. Watch here as Pod Colson frees the puck up with a big clean hit to keep the play alive in the offensive zone. How are you guys feeling about Pod Colson, by the way? I know he's not stacking up the points yet, but he seems to be making a difference every game, including this one, because the effort he made on that play led to this beautiful highlight reel goal from Sam Lafferty. He muscled his way to the net and wouldn't let anybody stop him. That's what a true power forward looks like. If he can do this on a nightly basis or even just once every few games, that'll make a huge difference for the team. 1-1. One, one. Tyler Myers made a great defensive play, swiping the puck away from a toe-dragging Victor Arvidsson. Mikheyev had a chance to break the tie, but Cam Talbot stopped him. More post-whistle rough stuff, even some mid-play rough stuff. At this point, the Canucks had pretty much taken complete control of the game, but unfortunately, that's not good enough to win unless you're already winning. And despite hammering the Kings in their own zone for the overwhelming majority of the second period, they couldn't score, and instead, the Kings were able to take advantage of a delayed penalty call on Susie to make it 2-1. And then they added another just a few minutes later. 3-1. Some more post-whistle rough stuff. DeSmith made a great save with 10 minutes left in the third period to keep his team in the game. Then Besser got called for interference and he was not happy about it. This was a great veteran move from Drew Doughty to alleviate the pressure the Canucks were starting to pour on. I know it's annoying, but it's smart. I wouldn't categorize it as a dive, but he knew what he was doing. I didn't fucking move! And to be fair to Besser, it probably shouldn't have been called because Brock didn't actually move to impede Doughty, but this play gets called all the time and it's likely very hard to tell the difference when you're down at ice level in the thick of it. Worst fucking ref in the NHL! It ended up being okay though, because the Canucks killed the penalty off, pulled the goalie, and then Besser scored his 37th goal of the season to bring the Canucks within one goal. And with under a minute left in the game, Rick Tockett called a timeout to give his players a breather and to try to draw up a play to tie the game. But all they could muster up was this weak shot from Connor Garland, and the Kings won 3-2 in a heater of a playoff-style game. And just so you know, when you hear hockey players say we just gotta stick to our game in post-game interviews, this is a good example of what they mean. Aside from the unfortunate line change that led to the Kings' first goal, the Canucks played great. There's no reason to panic themselves back to the drawing board or anything like that. They just gotta stick to their game. And props to the Kings, they played well. Here's what Miller said after the game. We've been at the top of the league the whole year. I think it's a, it's a time we can take pride in that. And, um, you know, you know, I love the fact when, you know, they're banging their sticks and when that last puck's cleared out, you know, they, they know they just beat a good hockey team. I mean, it says a lot. And, uh, you know, we're going to be a lot of hard games here coming down. This is good prep for us. And we got to find a way to win games like that. And, you know, they're all tight against LA. I mean, that's just how it is going to be this time of year. The Canucks are now 45-19-8. Good enough for first in the Pacific Division, first in the Western Conference, and second in the entire NHL. And there's only 10 games left until the playoffs. Nice. Congrats to the 41 people who predicted the score of the Flames game correctly. This is getting out of hand. And to the seven of you who predicted the score of the Kings game correctly. Good job, I guess. Oh, and I'm going on vacation, and I won't be back until next week. So that means I won't have a new video out until Friday, April 5th. It also means you're gonna have to comment your predictions for the next four Canucks games against the Dallas Stars, Anaheim Ducks, Vegas Golden Knights, and the Arizona Coyotes. Thank you to these nuckheads for supporting the channel by clicking the join button. Thank you for watching. I'll be back in 10 days. Bye. Oh, and there will be a new podcast episode coming out tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. Okay, bye. Garl showed up on a list of players I'd most like to fight as voted on by his peers. Does that make him feel like he's doing his job right? Oh, they just know it's a free win. I mean, who wouldn't want to fight the smallest guy in the league?